If you spend enough time scrolling through geological maps, you'll eventually encounter these circular things. They're all over the place. Some are extremely symmetrical and well-defined, while others are oblong or warped and sort of blurred around the edges. There are ones hundreds of miles across, and there are small ones that barely cover an acre. Sometimes they're associated with high spots or low spots, but they're also found on flat terrain. What they all share in common are these concentric rings. They have an obvious center and rings of material that seem to radiate out from the center, a little like a bullseye. What are these structures? Are they superficial, or do the underlying rocks determine their circular shape? And that brings us to the goal of this video. After watching this video, you should be able to identify a structure as a basin or a dome based on its rock layers. So let's start with some geology basics. Rock layers form one atop the other. The bottommost layer was laid down first. It was deposited first and then subsequent layers are stacked on top until you get to these superficial layers. Those are the most recent layers. Those are the youngest layers. They were produced last. And this general pattern of older layers on the bottom and younger layers on top is called the law of superposition. Now, I'm going to use some modeling clay to create some three-dimensional layers of rock in different colors. I'm going to make two different sets so we can treat them a little bit differently and see how that affects the surface pattern that's produced. I'll start with purple on the bottom, and so remember that means it's going to be the oldest, and I will end with red on the top, which means that red is going to be the younger rock. So let me put on some gloves so my hands don't get all covered in dye, and uh, away we go. <laughs> Beautiful. I have my layers. I have two identical sets of layers. Purple on the bottom represents the oldest layer. Red on the top represents the youngest layer. Now I'm going to do something a little different to each of these sets of layers. One of them, I'm going to create a three-dimensional structure that's called a basin. And on the other, I'm going to create a three-dimensional structure that's called a dome. Now basins and domes can help explain some of those weird bullseye-shaped structures that we saw earlier. And the forces at work in the earth can produce these different structures in rock layers. So let's produce a basin and a dome. Now, all that I'm really doing here is I'm just kind of bending and warping the layers so that they form kind of a bowl shape that's a little bit like what a basin is. Only instead of having an actual three-dimensional bowl, really it's just the layers that form this three-dimensional structure. It might be perfectly flat on the surface, but the layers themselves form kind of an up-curved bowl sort of shape. All right, there is our basin. So now I'm going to create a dome. A dome is shaped similar to a basin, but it's flipped upside down. So let's create a dome over here. Okay, so in this case, I'm going to take my top layers and actually bend them down over those older, deeper layers.
beautiful. We have our basin over here, and we have our dome over here. And it is very important to note that in both of these structures, the layers are identically ordered. The layer on the bottom, the oldest layer, is purple. The layer on the top, the youngest layer, is red. Now, one of the processes that is constantly at work on the surface of our planet is erosion. Erosion takes place when rock layers are exposed to the atmosphere. And so in both of these examples, this top surface is exposed to erosion. The reason for that is because that's where rain and snow and freezing and thawing happen. Uh, that's where wind is eroding things. Normally this process of erosion can take hundreds, millions, billions of years. I'm going to erode our layers in a matter of seconds with a clay knife. Now this clay knife is going to simulate erosion taking place against these layers as the wind and rain and freezing and thawing and snow and everything cuts down into these layers. So let's erode some layers. Let's start with our basin. Our basin is a little bit bowl-shaped. You can see that the deepest layer is the purple and the youngest layer is the red. So let's cut that up and see what happens. All right. So in this case, with the basin, you can see that what has occurred here is that the oldest layers, that purple, that oldest layer, is located around the outside. As we move inward, we find the blue and the green and the yellow and the orange and finally the red. That youngest layer, the red, is located in the middle. Now that's because of the shape of the basin. It's sort of curving down like a bowl, and so those topmost, youngest layers show up in the center. Now let's do the same thing to our dome. Okay. Now with our dome, something a little different has happened. You can see that in this case, the youngest layer, the red, is located around the outside. As we move inward to the orange, yellow, green, blue, and finally the purple, we find those oldest layers are toward the center. Both of these structures give us similar shapes on the surface. They're almost a little bit like a bullseye or a target. But it is absolutely crucial to note that the order in which the ages appear are opposites. In our basin, the youngest layer is at the center. In our dome, the oldest layer is in the center. What's great about that is that if we're looking at a map of the Earth's surface and we find these strange circular structures, all we have to do is look at the very center of that structure. If the very center layers of that structure are the youngest, that means that it's a basin, because in the basin we found that the youngest layers appeared in the center. If in that circular structure the oldest layers are at the center, that means we must be looking at a dome, because in the dome we found that those older, the purple layers, are located at the center. Let's review the goal of this video to make sure you met it. After watching this video, you should be able to Identify a structure as a basin or a dome based on its rock layers. If you can't do that, go back and watch the parts of the film you didn't understand. Until next time, remember, you can learn anything.